Are alt bars better than drop bars? In this video, I'm finally going to answer this question with a very definitive answer of sometimes, maybe, it depends. <laughs> the problem with this is that it's sort of like asking the question of, is a screwdriver better than a hammer? And both are tools, but sometimes you need a hammer and other times you need a screwdriver. As a longtime curly bar lover, I have been slowly experimenting with alt bars. And by alt bars, I mean bars that sweep back more than your typical mountain bike bar and also bars with weird extensions on them. To test this out, aside from riding lots of bikes with alt bars this past year, I've also set up my own personal bike here, the hardtack with both drops and alt bars to see if I prefer one more than the other and also which circumstances I was sort of wishing I had the other bar. First off, I feel like I have to dispel one of the most common uh, arguments that I always see on the channel here against drop bars. And, and that is some variation of if you're not racing, you don't need drop bars, you should just use flat bars. And frankly, this is just dumb. Yes, while drop bars are used for road racing, so are flat bars. You know, there's mountain bike racing, that's a thing. I think what they actually mean is that drops put you in an overly aggressive position. And while this is true in some instances, it's not always the case. I'd actually argue that drop bars have a range of potential positions depending on what you do. You don't have to just slam that stem. You can set up your drop bars level with your saddle or even a little bit taller than your saddle. <gasps> In fact, some drop style handlebars like the dirt drops are, are meant to be set up a little bit higher so that the hooks position is your primary position. Basically what it comes down to is you don't have to be a slave to the industrial roadie complex. You know, definitely feel free to experiment with how high or how low you want your drop bars to be. As long as it's not hurting you in some kind of physiological way, then have at it. Okay, with that out of the way, which one is better? And can we even come to a conclusion here? Since there is a much more varied landscape of alt bars when compared to drop bars, and by that I mean alt bars can have a variety of sweep, you know, different rise, extensions, no extensions. For the purposes of this video, uh, when I say alt bar, I'm gonna refer specifically to this one. This is the Harvey Mushman uh, handlebar by Crust. I think it's fairly typical of the alt bars that we're seeing here on the market. So you can see it has a pretty generous back sweep at 24 degrees, a lot more than your typical mountain bike riser bar. In this instance, I did put on these bar end extensions to give me another hand position. And you'll also notice that this has a pretty generous amount of rise. Another unique feature of this bar is it's really long flat section here. So it's designed to carry uh, bags pretty well. For the comparison drop bar, I'm going to be referencing specifically this Redshift uh, kitchen sink bar. It doesn't have the extension here, but I think it's pretty typical of the gravel handlebar that we're seeing on the market. This handlebar actually has a little bit of sweep. Probably the most important defining features are that it's wide at 47 centimeters. They do offer sizes up to 53. And this also has a fairly shallow drop, which is kind of a more modern feature of, you know, contemporary gravel bars for lack of better words. Let's talk pros and cons, starting off with the drop bars. What are the strengths of a drop bar as opposed to an alt bar? Going back and forth, the first big pro for me is that it's a bar that I find more comfortable over longer rides. A drop bar just offers a lot more positions. You can shorten your reach by grabbing onto the flat section of handlebar. You can kind of extend your back a little bit further by going into the hoods. Likewise, you have the drops position. On any given ride, I'm alternating from the hoods to the flats to the drops, kind of varying it up so you're not getting stiff. Another big pro for me is the hand position when you're in the drops and the hood. Because of all the computer work I do for the YouTube channel, whenever I have my wrists like this for a prolonged period of time, I just get shooting pains up my forearm. Interestingly, this doesn't seem to happen when my hands are placed like this. Another big pro is during windy conditions. It's a lot easier to hide and tuck away from the wind by going into the drops here. Also, I will say for the most part, it's a lot easier to mount bags onto a drop bar. There's typically a really long flat section here and the routing is such that it either goes under the tape or it pops out forward like in this instance and you can slip a bag here. Okay, lots of pros for the curly bars. What are the cons? The biggest cons for me are when I'm riding on really steep and technical descents. 
Although 47 is fairly wide for a drop bar, I mean, look at this thing. A lot of the new alt bars that are coming on the market are 800 uh, millimeters wide, and that width gives you a lot of control on sketchy descents. Another downside is, you know, by the very nature of a drop bar, you're pitched forward a little bit more, leaning over the front of the bike, and this makes it feel a little bit easier to go over the handlebars. Another downside for the drop bars are also in sandy conditions, again, because of their width and, and having the added weight on the front of the bike. I find I tend to sink into gravel and sand a lot more. And I don't have quite the leverage to correct the steering. So those are the cons for the curly bar. Okay, let's talk alt bar. Going back and forth, the pros for me when riding an alt bar is that these are super stable and confidence inspiring on steep descents. You tend to be a little bit more upright, less cantilevered over the front. So I don't feel as if I'm gonna go over the bars as easily. Similarly, since the hand position is so wide, you have a ton of leverage uh, over the front tire. So when you hit sandy conditions, rocky conditions, it's much easier to fight those destabilizing forces. Another big plus is that if you want to have a slightly higher uh, riding position, it's a lot easier to achieve with alt bars. Lots of them come with some nice rise built in. A little bit more of a challenge on curly bars. What are the cons of alt bars? Uh, a big con for me is that on long rides, even with these bar extensions, I feel like I'm still pretty limited in terms of hand positions and it's really fatiguing. On this bar in particular, this is my primary hand position. And although it's not you know, perfectly perpendicular, I can only ride in this position for so long before you know, it starts to aggravate my carpal tunnel. Uh, another downside is on rides where there's a lot of wind. There's just no two ways about it. It's a lot harder to tuck away uh, from the wind on alt bars. And lastly, one other challenge with many alt bars is actually mounting a bag. This one's a lot better than other bars because it does have a long flat section for mounting a bag, but sometimes the housing just gets in the way. And you don't get that with drop bars because they tend to be tucked under the tape. And before someone suggests integrated uh, handlebars for mountain bikes, that's just dumb. And they'll never do it for an alt bar. Those are the general pros and cons you have to weigh. And that's not even getting into a geometry and tire size. I find that as the tire gets larger, there's more kind of friction to overcome when steering. And that's easier to do with a wider alt bar. Also in terms of bike designs, bikes with shorter top tubes tend to favor uh, drop bar usage as opposed to bikes with longer top tubes, which tend to favor uh, alt bars and slightly swept back bars. So although you can put any handlebar on any bike, there are some things to consider for optimal results. So here's the thing, you can like and use both, turns out. There are distinct advantages and disadvantages to both, uh, in my opinion. There's that saying, tan staffel. There's no such thing as a free lunch. There are no perfect products except for maybe the Pedro's tire lever. But other than that, there are going to be compromises. I do think it's a bit of a fool's errand to say that a drop bar or an alt bar will work for all people at all times. I'm fortunate to have multiple bikes with different bar setups and also setting up this bike in particular to take two handlebars pretty easily. Depending on the train, the type of the ride, the length of the ride, uh, I've got options. If I were you, I wouldn't stress about it too much. Do what you like, what makes sense for your kind of riding, what makes you comfortable in the long term. That's probably the most important thing. But I'm curious, where do you guys stand on the alt bar or drop bar debate? Have you dropped drop bars or are you hardcore team curly bar? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please hit that subscribe button or better yet, join us on Patreon where you get access to giveaways, discount codes from brands that we like and you help support non-competitive, non-racing cycling content on the YouTube. We hardly do any sponsored content and I'm not pushing Amazon products on you guys all the time. So if you appreciate that, join us on Patreon, buy some merch at the merch store and as always, keep the supple side down.